So the Telosa Hunt syndrome is named for two doctors, Dr. Telosa and Dr. Hunt. The Telosa Hunt syndrome is idiopathic, which means we really don't know what causes it. And just because we have an eponym doesn't mean we have pathophysiology mechanism. We don't. So Telosa Hunt is automatically a dangerous diagnosis because it's idiopathic and it has an eponym. And when things have an eponym, you think you have a diagnosis when in reality you just wrote idiopathic. It is a painful and steroid responsive ophthalmoplegia syndrome. So it's painful, steroid responsive, and ophthalmoplegia. And that by itself is a dangerous stem because a lot of things are painful, steroid responsive, and ophthalmoplegic and are not idiopathic. So of course, this is a diagnosis of exclusion. You have to do an imaging study, and that usually means MRI of the cavernous sinus because of the ophthalmoplegia and the orbit. And those are, those are the locations where the Telosa hunt actually is presumed to be because even though it's thought to be idiopathic, it's granulomatous in nature, and it's a granulomatous enhancing lesion in the cavernous sinus on the ipsilateral sides of ophthalmoplegia. The pain is coming from trigeminal. And so it's very difficult to get a biopsy because it's cavernous sinus, so neurosurgery is not going to want to biopsy it, so we just give it steroids empirically. And if it goes away, then we call that Telosa Hunt. So I would say you should do an MRI scan. You should do the labs for the usual suspects, infectious, inflammatory, uh, IgG4, other kinds of things that could mimic an ophthalmoplegia in the cavernous sinus with a mass lesion. And you could do a lumbar puncture to look for inflammation, but a steroid treat trial is indicated. And so part of the diagnostic criteria of the Telosa Hunt syndrome is that you have exclusion of alternative etiologies before you call it idiopathic. So the Telosa Hunt syndrome is an idiopathic, granulomatous, cavernous sinus, painful, steroid-responsive ophthalmoplegia syndrome. It is a diagnosis of exclusion. You need to do the MRI, the labs, might do a lumbar puncture. They have to respond to the steroid, and normally it turns the pain around within 24 to 48 hours. The ophthalmoplegia takes longer. And you have to repeat the scan to make sure it goes away and it can't come back. Even though recurrent telosa hunt does exist, that's, that's a big red flag that you actually have an underlying disorder. So just because we have the eponym, telosa hunt, doesn't mean you're out of the woods. Telosa and hunt practiced before we had MRI. In most cases, the telosa hunt in the literature are telosa not. There's some underlying disorder, sarcoid, syphilis, lymphoma, tuberculosis, other granulomatous diseases must be excluded.